Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Agreco Oil and Gas Podcast. I'm Josh Haugen, and today our guest is Agreco Zone, Jeff Bland, Power Product Line Manager here at Agreco. So, Jeff, today really wanted to pick your brain about the Rapid Deploy 1300 and this little thing called the Tier 4 units that we carry. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Which one do you want uh, to start with? The 1300 or the the tier four? Well, I I guess we'll maybe uh, maybe enlighten your listeners to what uh, a rapid deploy 1300 actually refers to. Um, we we have a range. Agreco obviously has a range of different generators. We have natural gas generators. We have diesel generators. We even do HFO and a lot of energy storage. So. Uh, the the 1300 is actually one of our uh, most commonly used natural gas units. Uh, we've got you know over a thousand megawatts of these units installed globally, and uh, typically we have them in a very compact 20 foot by 8 foot arrangement, which is uh, it stacked. So there's some cooling equipment and uh, a muffler mounted on. Uh, in, a, in a box on the roof. So I, I guess just following on, so I, yeah, to, to answer your question, the 1300 rapid deploy uh, is a new configuration of our, you know, tried and tested 1300 kW natural gas generator, um, which trailerizes it and allows for very quick install of of that that unit uh it, it brings it to either 480 volts or 5 kv uh, or you know 4160 is a standard voltage or 13.8 kv there's a choice of voltages directly from the trailer uh, so it's it's a neat package it allows us to save a lot of time and uh and money on on a install time which you know, it opens up some opportunities for, you know, faster turnaround projects. And, uh, the, but this configuration, which uh, which allows us to reduce the, the install hours dramatically by about 75%, actually, uh, the that, that configuration has been born essentially out of a, a shift in the market from more uh, longer term microgrid type work to uh, a, a, a general trend towards uh, shorter term emergency response work uh, and you know other applications such as you know drilling or uh, fracking where the the location has to move fairly often so yeah i like it because we like you said we have we have a tremendous amount of people that have been working with this equipment and we've adapted it to to pretty much what everybody's been asking for is how can we make it so we can install faster? How can we make it so we can deploy faster? So taking that existing technology that is pretty well known and tried and true and just adapting it and making it more applicable to more people. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's certainly easier and cheaper to, uh, you know, innovate step by step rather than trying to tear up the book and start again so <laughs> we um you know we, we're gaining a lot by by operating this way now it's not to say it's the only solution we're looking at but it's i guess one of the topics for today and we we have a good number of these now actually built and you know ready for projects or on projects at the moment so yeah very nice when we when we and you i should say look at a profile of how would you use this the rapid deploy 1300 um i think you mentioned drilling and i'm i'm obviously a little bit biased because i'm oil and gas so i'm i never anytime i hear anything about oil and gas my ears perk up but what other what other applications do you see is suitable for this type of rapid deploy this this amount of density of power being deployed very quickly well i I think what what I would uh, maybe point to is uh, some of our other applications that we typically do. So Agreco is uh, essentially one of the largest companies in the world for 
uh, providing very quick turnaround power. So if there's a hurricane or you know wildfire or a big event that's happening, we're generally the ones that are drafted in to provide the the power, the the cooling, the AC, etc. for these situations. So uh, one of the challenges with having a, a you know a setup that requires a crane uh, is that for emergency response, it's essentially meant that that gas doesn't become quite as easy an option. So for the customer, gas could be a great cost saver, uh, as well as you know in in emergency situations, a lot of the diesel generation is saturated. There's not very much equipment available. And given that we have a, a, a very large volume of both diesel and natural gas, when that happens, it's nice to have the backup to do these projects with right. gas. So um, especially, yeah. especially if you look at the current events that's happening today with, um, I mean, that massive hurricane that's sweeping through Florida, getting diesel, getting diesel to locations where roads are closed can, can and it may be difficult if you have a gas infrastructure that hasn't been interrupted. Granted, you still got to get the generators in there, but um, may make life a little bit easier, just depending on on your setup and what you got going on. Yeah, for sure. And pr diesel prices start spiking really, really quickly mm -hmm. in these events. Uh, it's harder to get hold of. And, you know, if you do have a gas supply, I mean, we, we often have these conversations well ahead of time with our customers and the utilities, you know, a lot of the time, you know, we're working behind the meter to provide solutions. They don't necessarily know where the problem is going to be, but they'll have critical locations where if power goes down, you know, for for example, New Orleans, if the 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 pumps go down, uh, that you know keep the keep New Orleans from going underwater, then you know that's a, a fairly major problem. So you know we can go in, have the conversations about having the fuel connection set up ahead of time. And then basically just bring the the equipment in and connect when it's needed. So um, so yeah, it's it's a kind of iterative process. I think uh, one of the other things that has pushed the the uh, the equipment in the, this direction is, you know, for these events, uh, there's there's still an environmental push to lower emissions, and that that definitely is helped by using a natural gas solution. Yeah, definitely. You you said something earlier. I was just checking my notes, making sure uh, I want to cover everything that we can um, about the 1300s, the multiple voltages. Can you elaborate a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, I think this is a really nice feature that we have that uh, that doesn't exist in a lot of the trailerized product that's available. So we, we do a lot of uh, distribution work, a lot of transformation equipment alongside our our units but with this product we've actually built that capability onto the trailer with the 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 generator so we can actually select whichever voltage the customer is looking for directly from the skid uh you know it 13.8 kv that allows you to to hook into line power uh connections um it you know it's it's generally better for transporting power a long distance because you can use less cable. Uh, but, you know, if your equipment is running directly on 480 volts, then, you know, we can direct couple to it using this same piece of kit. That's so, so big. Yeah. I mean, it's, I, I think it's a good selling point for, for that unit. No, I, I can't, I can't count how many times, I mean, it, it feels like in oil and gas, nearly every project we do is a different voltage. When I say different voltage, I mean ranging from 480, let's say low voltage to medium voltage. So having the capability, again, to have it mobile so you can move that big power density around and it's gas and you can get multiple voltages out of it, that's um, it's like a trifecta. Pretty exciting. Yeah, so... Would you would you like to talk a little bit about um, some of the new products that we're releasing in, in the diesel world as well? So um, tier tier four for anyone who's listening that doesn't know too much about the the different tier ratings, the EPA, 
uh, set out different emissions legislation that kicks in at different points uh, in you know in the recent past. So you know the oldest tier rating was called tier one, and uh, from tier one you had tier two, three, four, and then now we're in tier four final. So any engines bought after reduce our carbon footprint, and we've invested fairly heavily in in tier four equipment. So you know we have a, a range now uh, from twenty five. KW all the way up to um, 1200 KW and above. I mean, we can parallel as many as needed. And again, this the new technology comes with some challenges, and a lot of our customers struggle with these these uh, these new systems that have to be fitted to the engine. But we have the knowledge in house. I mean, this is something that we do all the time. What would you say? What would you say some of the challenges that that maybe customers face? Well, Jen. Yes, with higher tier engines, but a lot of that is generally down to the fact that it's a, a lack of experience means that units will shut down. So, you know, because we do these applications all over the world and, you know, we have a lot of experience with the equipment, essentially part of our uh, solution isn't just the, the units and helping customers meet their emissions targets, but it's also that expertise. Yeah. And that's, I think, quite a big piece to that. Sure. Well, we've we've talked a bit about tier four. We talked a bit about our new rapid deploy. I, sh I should rephrase our rapid deploy 1300s because it's not exactly new. It's uh, existing technology that we've advanced. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Uh, yeah, well, we, we do a lot of energy storage. I guess that's something ah. to 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 pull in as well i mean we it's a complement to our generation in a lot of cases but you know equally we we offer that as something for the renewable market to 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 help uh augment their their solution i'll, I'll give a good example so we're doing some work with wind farms where we commission the site so we act as the grid for the the wind wind turbines to back up against and then they can test all their their breaker closing and etc uh, so typically we've always done that by creating a grid using generators okay you hook mm -hmm. two or three generators together and then you just pump out a constant power and the 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 wind turbine will, will feed back into that uh, what what we're doing instead now is we offer generators with a battery and the battery can actually be recharged as the wind turbine is pushing power back in. So it reduces the number of generators you have, therefore your fuel consumption, and it's a, it's a very nice uh, package solution that includes a couple of different technologies that we use. Um, again, it's part of our energy mix. We, we don't see any one technology as being the right thing for everything but we bring our expertise into the room and say, okay, what's right for you? And, you know, we have a lot of, a lot of the different pieces to make that work. Right. No, that's a part of our, I guess, mantra is sizing, sizing appropriately and designing applications that best fit, that best fit your need, not giving you equipment that we have just per se available. So I think that that speaks pretty well. I mean, I'm most excited about, again, you said oil and gas. Drilling applications, I mean, spinning reserve and or just the, um, the example you gave with, it's not exactly reverse power, but transient loads, um, there's a lot of chatter about it and there's a lot of excitement of reducing fuel, reducing emissions and integrating a battery of some sorts. Um, it's going to be pretty exciting in the future. Well, with that, my friend, I think we, we are about out of time, so I will close it there. I'll tell everybody for more information, please visit agreco.com or you can contact us at 833-518-7650. Thanks, Josh. Thank you.